All right, guys, it's time to talk about one of my least favorite content creators in all of YouTube. You know how I talk about the fact that the right always has an advantage over the left when it comes to online content creation and reaching a huge audience because fear baiting, rage baiting, these things are fundamental to conservative content and fundamentally will always draw more attention, more clicks, and more engagement, which just funnels a non-stop cycle of exponential growth on the internet um, that the left will never really be able to attain. That's just, it's just how political engagement on the left and right works. We are not fear mongers that need to keep constant 24 seven momentum going of being angry about something. It's not all based on negativity. But if that is what you do, and you are a conservative figure like who we're going to cover today, then you can expect levels of success like this guy. In less than 500 videos and less than three years, he has ballooned to nearly 7 million subscribers, and his channel is centered around using paid actors and heavily deceptive footage to push the idea that, well, mainly, more Democrat run areas are being taken over by homeless people who are violent, immigrants who are violent, and well, his most recent video is Inside the Ohio Town Invaded by Cat-Eating Haitians. Mind you, this guy is a massive liar. And I know this because the first video from his I ever covered was actually one uh, that he did here in Seattle, the very city that I live in. Now, I've been around Seattle a good amount in the last couple years that I've lived here. I'm pretty familiar with which areas are not so nice and which areas are very nice. I don't know if you guys have been to Seattle yourselves. I imagine many of you have not since, you know, the world's a big place. But if you have, then you know that just like any other city, there are good parts of it that are higher income, that are a lot prettier and cleaner and have less crime, and there are parts of the city that are lower income, are more heavily policed, tend to have a higher homeless population, and you might not necessarily be as comfortable walking down the street there at night. This is every city, because cities are where they're the highest and most dense human population, and when you have more humans densely packed into a single place, well, you're likely to have a higher rate of crime because there's more people everywhere to do crime against or to potentially commit crime. And because there's so many people, and the majority of people in America are densely packed into cities, and cities also typically mean, you might not expect it considering the fact that poverty is also more frequent in cities than in rural areas, um, that, um, like, like extreme poverty, homelessness poverty, um, education in cities is better. In fact, cities also tend to have a far more uh, diverse uh, population when it comes to race, gender, sexuality, any number of things, really. And that typically means that, more often than not, most American cities are hard blue. Even if they're in a red state, most cities, like, especially bigger cities, are pretty damn blue. And this has, for a long time, been something that the Republicans have had to tussle with. And one of their ways of doing so has been pushing the idea that the general blue leadership of big cities in America uh, is the cause of the homeless epidemic in America, of any crime that you see in these cities. And because you can't really go to like some red area in the country and find a big homeless encampment because homeless people don't go out to the country to survive in mass, um, you can really only go to cities to find that. Obviously, you're gonna be able to create a narrative with that, right? In fact, Seattle, has a pretty decently long, narrow stretch of it along uh, some of the highway that is filled with homeless camps. There is definitely a pretty substantial homeless problem in Seattle. In fact, there's, you know, just this long stretch that's like a lot of homeless camps. Um, however, if you've watched a Tyler Oliveira video about Seattle or LA, then you'll have seen footage of places like Skid Row or this underpass area in Seattle and it'll have been framed as if they are just walking to random areas around Seattle and this is the state of things. It's essentially an evolution of the narrative that s countless cities burned down because of the BLM protests. Remember how, like, Portland is just rubble and ashes right now? Like, Portland literally doesn't exist anymore because of BLM? You guys remember that, right? So I figured we ought to watch his most recent video, which is very much relevant to Donald Trump Don't and the debate that's going on right now. 
his video inside the Ohio town invaded by cat-eating Haitians. If you're not familiar, basically the entirety of his content is centered around deceptive editing to convince you that brown people are scary and homeless people are vermin that need to be executed or whatever. Um, he, his fans very much believe that we need to adopt uh, a Singaporean uh, legal structure, if, if for lack of a better uh, example. Anyway, um, we're about to watch some real schlock here, and uh, I'm not excited for it, but let's do it anyway. I also sped it up a little bit because I I don't want to watch this at normal speed. Sorry, fan. There was Haitians in a white van driving around the neighborhoods, collecting cats, getting them and eating them. In my opinion, they're worthless. A bunch of worthless fucking saints. They're getting thousands of dollars in government assistance, even the cash assistance cards. They're calling them the magic money cards because they never run out. Uh, man, they're nothing but a headache. All they're doing is raising our rent and our taxes and, and wrecking vehicles. Everybody wants to make this into a race issue. It's not a race issue. It's culture, it's accountability, and it's respect. Since June, they took me off. I do love how you get the different types of racists here. One thing that I, I do appreciate this about Tyler Oliveira is that because his content is such virality bait, he does try to play a centrist a little bit. There is also a chance that he's actually just a centrist and he's really bad at being a centrist and just comes off as very fundamentally conservative and his audience tends to lean very conservative. But um, And he's also quite dishonest with his framing of the places that he goes to, so I, I don't have a lot of sympathy for him. But... Because he wants to frame himself as a neutral spectator, just visiting these places and talking to people and learning what they uh, they have to say, he um, tends to show people that represent what I would presume is his position, but in a bad way. And so I like how this video shows the different types of racists, like a few of them that are just... You know, they're missing teeth. They have no interest in looking like they're not racist. They live in a trailer, right? And they're just going off about how, like, like all the racists, like, just no mask on whatsoever. Just mask fully off. Um, and then you've got the people who are definitely racist and are repeating the same things that the racists are saying, but are trying to say stuff like, it's not about race. It's about culture. You know what I mean? Like, the different, you've got the different levels of, like, racism those that have the mask a little on those that have it fully on and those that have it fully off you know it's it's neat to see the spectrum that's something we can at least appreciate about this video i'm a vet they took me off of the disability you're a veteran and you're competing with some of the resources they're getting i just came in here yeah i need some solutions i'm losing my mind this is springfield ohio what was once a small town in ohio home to roughly 60,000 working class americans until 20,000 plus haitian immigrants flooded into town with rumors of them eating the neighbor's cats and local geese what did you do why'd you kill the cat did you eat that cat Mind you, by the way, the city's government has come out to say there is literally no evidence whatsoever that any pets have been stolen or eaten in this town. Something that you guys probably don't know if you don't follow a lot of conservative content is that, like, every day, some, like, video like that comes out that's supposed to be this bombshell that proves everything that they said was real. Who remembers when, um... Oh, I forget what the, the organization was. It's this, like, really conservative organization that claimed to have all of the, the big bombshell that the election was stolen. And the Republicans were all freaking out about how it was finally, they finally had proof. They finally had proof. And then it came out and it was nothing. It was literally nothing. It was just bluff. There's, like, constantly these big stories and, like, claims made. And they'll even have what seems to be evidence for it. But then a little later, we find out that's not the case. A really good example of this is the Jewish tunnels story in New York. When that story came out, the Nazis online, oh my god, they were running up and down the line, celebrating like, we finally got proven right, we finally got proven right, there are Jewish tunnels under New York City, they're doing some shit. And then, of course, it and, and you know, those videos came out and it was like... Oh, yeah, it was Project Veritas that did the whole we have the proof the election was stolen thing. Um, and those videos came out of, like, a bunch of dudes who who are from a synagogue just funneling out of a tunnel in a sidewalk in New York. And it's like, well, shit, that is definitely a video of, of Jewish guys in a tunnel under New York City. There is no denying that is what we're seeing here. Did, did the right get 
something kind of right? Like, what's happening here? What the fuck? And then, of course, it ended up not being anything close to what was being implied by the right. In fact, what had actually happened was a property dispute with uh, a, a property developer and the uh, synagogue and a property that was adjacent to it, uh, to the synagogue that they previously owned, but were now in a property dispute over the ownership of and tried to illegally tunnel under to try and get back to the building. There was no weird, like jq shit or whatever happening in the tunnel but it, it was very much like one of those things that in the midst of the breaking story when you're able to f like filter what is going viral with the narrative it can seem like oh do they have something here but of course there has absolutely been zero evidence that is actually reputable besides online viral videos on tiktok to support the idea that hordes of haitian immigrants are coming to this town and in Ohio and eating people's pets. They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets. And causing car accidents left and right. Isn't it so ridiculous that Kamala Harris didn't take that seriously? Right. And driving locals out of their homes by paying above market rental prices with welfare subsidized by the American taxpayer. Are Haitian immigrants are coming to America. They're receiving government benefits that you need a social security number, as far as I know, to receive. And are using the immense amount of money they're getting from these, uh, these benefits to outbid rental and house purchase prices for locals in the town. I don't believe it, guys. Call me a skeptic, call me a cynic, I don't believe it. Are these Haitians eating cats? How did they travel 2,000 plus miles from Haiti all the way to Ohio? And do the locals and their new Haitian neighbors get along? I pulled up to Springfield myself to see if this was real or overblown fake news. A lot of this is alleged because I truly don't know what's going on and neither does Twitter. Twitter is relying off of a few images and a few Reddit threads and there are rumors that Haitians are taking neighbors' cats and eating them. Um, are you from Haiti by chance? Yeah. Does everyone get along here in Springfield? Yes. Good? Good. Motherfuckers are worthless. Bunch of worthless sand. Yeah. When did the Haitian neighbors come and move here? I'm gonna say probably. I like how the first Haitian dude they talked to is just like, yeah, I mean, it's pretty chill here. People get along well enough, I guess. And the first, like, I assume the first white dude they talked to is just like the most stereotypical, like, racist white dude in the South you could possibly conjure in your mind. Five months ago. Okay. I spoke to a few of them in French. They're up here. Don't wave at me, you sorry sand. I tell them like it is, fuck, man. I don't like them. I don't like them, and I, I, I want, I want them to know I don't God, like them. Pack up and move back to Haitiville, wherever the fuck you're from. Why did you Haitiville? come to Haitiville? Okay. Why don't you go back to Haitiville, where you came from? Okay. Um, do you plan on living here for much longer? Yeah. 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 I heard there were rumors of Haitians eating the neighbors' cats and a Canadian goose. Is that true or completely false? No. No. Man, no. Man, back. Okay. Well, Okay, okay, to be very clear here, if a Haitian immigrant shot or, like, killed a Canadian goose and ate it, who the fuck cares? For one, Canadian geese would kill you without a second thought, alright? Like, there is not a single human being on this planet that a Canadian ge goose would not kill and then probably, like, violate the corpse of if they could, okay? If you know anything about geese, then you know. All right, these are not creatures that you should be like, oh, to find out someone kill an, killed an eight. All right. Now, goose is a very frequently eaten, like, uh, uh, bird meat all around the world. Like, are, are people not, a, like, goose is not a weird food bird. Like, I don't know if we eat goose here in America all that much. It's definitely not popular here. But, like, all over the world, goose is a pretty popular meat. At where, where geese exist. And it's not considered weird. People eat duck. They're literally just bigger ducks. Duck hunting is very popular in America. I don't know what this implication is that like, oh, they ate a goose. It's like, um, would you ever give someone shit for going duck hunting? Like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Pas quoi ça tout peut-être mon qui doit avoir un problème médication qui fait ça fait ça même pas quoi. Okay. Vraiment difficile pour ça t'arriver. OK. Bah, we've lost a whole bunch of cats. Uh, there was a van load of a uh, van pulled over that had over 100 cats in it with the Haitians. They said they was eating them. Actually? Yeah. Not fake news. Not fake news. So a van was collecting cats and uh, eating them. I watched Trust that happen. Them, guys. I watched them get pulled over with the cats. Trust and me, admit bro. to the police that they was eating them. You're not joshing with me. No, I'm almost 50 years old, buddy. I they totally admitted to the police they were kidnapping cats and eating them. And I guess the, the city government is so afraid of looking racist, I guess, because of the woke America, that uh, they've lied to all the media outlets and said there there is no evidence whatsoever of this happening. Supposedly, this, the city is lying for some reason about this. That's actually what Trump said on the debate stage, that this, the city must be lying about it if they're saying it's not true. I don't, no. You don't mess around? No. Twitter is saying the Haitians are eating cats and can't drive. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> true or no? no? No. No, okay. I believe it. Like, I've heard rumors about them taking the geese and killing them. Dude. It can't be an accident now that it's been literally every every person interviewed that's like saying some racist shit has been white. And then you're just like, they're, they're talking to like non-white people, like even Haitian immigrants. And they're like, I, I mean, I, I don't think that's real, but, um, you know, who knows? I guess there's just some ignorant people out there. Anyway, I'm going to go on with my day. Have a good one. You know, just like the most normal people they have spoken to are the Haitian immigrants that, that he's spoken to. Like, I will say, of all the content creators that um, push themselves as a centrist but come off as right wing, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler Oliveira is just a useful idiot for conservatives. Because at the same time, he does actually, well, he frames things in a very, like, bizarre and conservative way. It also feels like his platforming is surprisingly fair, if that makes sense. It's it's bizarre, you know? And eating them, so I try to stay clear away, because they, I've even heard about them eating the eggs of them over there, so I'm like, okay, that's kind of disturbing. They not. There he is. The... <laughs> it's disturbing to eat goose eggs, apparently. Dude, have you never hunted ducks? Duck hunting is like, what, like half the reason to own a shotgun in America. What do you, like, what? This is your guy right here? Uh, yes. Okay. So far, so good. I haven't had no issues, but they kind of know us. And are they chill? They're all right, I guess. I don't pay no mind to them. You know, and they're everywhere. They take our fucking apartments. The landlords make the people move out so they can rent to the Haitians to get more money. You know, it's bullshit. You know, you go to the grocery they store. They rent to the Haitians to get more you money know, because apparently these Haitian immigrants are just immensely wealthy, but they're also so poor they're collecting cats to eat and murdering local bird life, I guess? I don't know. I'm an American, yeah. just like you. Yeah, yeah. And these motherfuckers come from Haitianville, wherever the f they're from, and they get Haitian everything. They get, their f they get medical care paid and everything. You know, it's, it's bull Where did they get the money? The government. They okay. said it's a fucking uh, program for them to, uh... For, like, migrants... This video has done nothing so far but convince me even more so that this is a local conspiracy developed, like, that was come up with by racist locals that has made its way up the spire of conservative propaganda all the way to Trump. Asylum seekers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, they're, they're like roaches, man. Yeah, I get along with them as long as they don't go pulling like their roaches. crazy machetes wow. when they're out mowing their grass Mask with it. Off. They brought out machetes. Oh yeah, they. Yeah. That's how they trim their yard. They actually. Yeah. It surprised me they let them all in, but I think that if they're going to come in, they should be. When I say, by the way, the American people would elect Hitler himself if it meant lower gas prices and cheaper groceries. These are the people I'm talking about. Not even these people. These people are the ones who would have already had. Like Hitler would have already had their vote. It's the people who are nowhere near this dumb that will vote for Trump, or even worse, if they think it means lower gas prices. I, like, you, you got to understand how much the economy is really probably the biggest wedge issue in any election. And the Republicans, unfortunately, have a stranglehold on that narrative. I really hope Kamala's performance in that debate changes that legal and not illegal and i don't see why they're giving them all this money and everything like that when our people are the ones suffering for all this for them coming in i'm getting ready to be homeless they're getting yeah. ready to sell my house because of the haitians you think a haitian will move in yeah they're coming wednesday to look at it actually yeah you'll notice by the way that this like festering racism seems to have been f like primarily caused by um uh economic anxiety a lot like um a lot of uh, leftist theory suggests that um the biggest tool of racists is weaponizing economic anxiety 
Um, and you'll get some leftists, I would argue dumber leftists, who say that's not the case. But to an extent, no, yeah, I think this is a really good showcase of that. When you see people who are living in shitty means, um, obviously you don't have to be poor to be racist, but if you are poor, it is far easier to take your pre-existing anger about your shitty life situation and convince you, or even convince yourself, that there must be someone to blame for it. Hey, why not those brown people who aren't from here? They must be to blame for it. They're different. And when they buy this house, we'll both be out here on the streets. We ain't got nowhere to go. We want to fix the income. Are Haitians paying rent? Are they paying their bills? Are they being paid to live here? They're being paid to live here. I don't see why they'd have to pay they're rent. Being they're being paid, paid to, to be, live be here. here. Who's paying them? The government. And that's that's our biggest issue, too, is... The government is paying the Haitians to live there and paying them so much that they are out bidding the locals. That is the that is the claim. Taking our schools over and they're running the Americans out of our own countries, it feels like. This this country has gone to hell. The reality, by the way, is that if you're an immigrant from like Haiti or whatever, there's a really good chance that you are um, actually relatively well off um, because immigrating is not necessarily an easy or cheap process. Um, and you kind of have to have resources and a lot of know how to do it anyway. And you have to have a lot of luck, too. And so the people from Haiti that are arriving in this town are probably, like, smart, educated, relatively well-off well to begin with people who are coming in. And they're not receiving money benefits from the government. They came to America and were able to get to America because they are already more well-off and have a brighter future than the average dude who's being interviewed for this video. You know what I mean? To live there, and there's another seven or eight that lives right here in this yeah, corner house, and, door, yeah. and four of them just moved in here. They ain't in there. Do you think you'll sell the house to a Haitian family one day? Hell no. I wouldn't give them motherfuckers to sweat off my balls if he's dying of thirst. <laughs> I'm, I'm f***ing for real, man. I, I am, I am f***ing sick of them. This I, you know, I don't give a f if they put a Haitian in every f***ing house. I'll be man, this guy just does not care about pretending to not be racist. The only white f person here. Uh, Twitter is saying that Haitians are kidnapping the neighbor's cats and eating them. <laughs> Is that true or false? I, I gotta ask the hard questions here. I don't know. No. No. I love how the response is just like laughing really hard at how ridiculous it is. Like it's it's not even a thing being taken seriously. Like oh oh people are saying that. No no we're not doing that. No it's like what. We're we're we're, st we're apparently stealing the dogs and eating them. Uh, okay, like just reacting exactly how you'd react if you weren't doing that, and someone out of nowhere accused you of it. You know, just like bewildered laughter. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Why so, is everyone coming here? I came here to work, but I eat chat. No, because no, I don't eat chat. No, chat. No. Si nous besoin de viande, manger viande, aller dans Walmart, nous acheter, mais manger chat haïtien, pas manger chat. Ok. Why did we go to Walmart? Moi, j'ai quitté Haïti parce que dans mon pays, j'ai un petit genre de problème politique, de des autres gars passés. Donc, j'ai juste essayé de quitter jusqu'à ce que ça arrange pour me retourner dans le pays. Barbecue? Civil War? Moi, par contre, j'ai un peu de monde, seulement j'ai un problème, mais c'est déplacé même par qu'on en qu'un nom des deux ce soir qu'a fait ça ok ok so just family and friends told them to come here to Springfield could you ask them that yeah so I'm guessing what's happening right now is there's a shitload of political unrest in Haiti a lot of reasons for that to be fair um and uh, that's caused a massive amount of immigration and asylum seekers from Haiti to come to America um and the towns where they are moving to uh, the racist local white people are who are already living in you know poor financial straits because we're talking about the deep American South. Um, you know, Ohio, well, yeah, Ohio is the American. Ohio is aesthetically and culturally and visually the American South. Okay, like it's not geographically the American South, but let's be real. Like you go to Ohio, and the people you talk to are culturally far more similar to uh, like anyone in the South than even like the next state north right like it, it's trust me trust me okay um it, it's pretty much the deep south <laughs> you might it might as well be um and so like it seems though as though the pre-existing economic anxiety has fueled combined with like an influx of immigration 
to convince people that there must be some attack on them. There must be someone to blame for their problems. Brynn. I see. Okay. Merci. Okay. okay. I don't need cat. <laughs> okay. She clarified, I don't need cat. See how that trash can is right there? Right there. Yep. Okay. Every Haitian house you go around, it's honestly filled to the brim. There's trash that leaks out onto the corner okay. everywhere, but we're expected to yep, live right. clean environment. Sure. And That's her trash can. That is leaking out all over the... I love how she pointed to the trash can in front of her house, leaking out and said, their, their trash cans are just like that. Yep. Okay, every Haitian house you go around, it's honestly filled to the brim. There's trash that leaks out onto the corner okay. everywhere. Man, there's a lot of outdoor cats in this neighborhood for a place where you supposedly cannot have your cats outside without a risk of them being stolen and eaten. For, surprise, that might even be her cat that she is allowing to just be outdoors when supposedly this is a real problem. That's funny. But we're expected to live clean environment. And then on top of that, with the rise of immigrants and they get assisted living freely. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's coyotes killing local cats and uh, that's the... That's why there are videos of cat- Because there's definitely a video of a cat being, like, mauled in the street. But that doesn't seem like it would be- that. There, there's a lot of reasons why I don't think that was uh, Haitians, right? Um, what's more likely is somebody's outdoor cat got got by a coyote. And if you know anything about coyotes, you know they love city areas, by the way. Um, like, th th yeah. She was American? Who are you referring to? It makes it harder for people like me or somebody else who doesn't get assisted living to find affordable housing. Are they driving the housing costs up around here? Yeah, yeah. like nobody. Big time? Yeah, like. What are we talking? Okay. Um, honestly, in my opinion, it'll yeah. be a surprise if I don't get kicked out so they can boost up the rate on this place. They'll probably fix it. I see. Get it where it's looking better and boost the rate up on it. They pay 1200 a month. How much money? This is called gentrification. It's been happening in cities for a very long time. It has nothing to do with immigration. It has to do with the fact that cities have an influx of population growth because people move to cities for opportunities like education and work. And um, when people with money, which cities attract people with money, move to these places, they want nice houses, right? They're willing to pay top dollar for nice houses. And so a ton of property developers go through and they raise the rent until whoever's there can't afford to pay it anymore and then they remodel the house and they rent it out at 12 times the price money does the government give you per or month pero el food stamp me doy como un primera vez te pusieron como 500 segunda 300 okay cuánto that's like nothing by the way also are you guys familiar with like what food stamps can actually get you well, the viewers of this content are not on food stamps, and, uh, like, the the concept of welfare is just a, like, political wedge point to them. Like, they've never actually been affected by its existence or non-existence. Um, but, uh, if you don't know, like, you know you can't get hot food with food stamps? Like, just to give you an idea of how limited... The government assistance is you know that you are not able to get hot food with food stamps simply because the idea that like giving hot meals to poor people for free would be too nice to them government assistance in america is so stingy that we draw the line at free hot meals because a hot meal is a level of luxury that poor people should not be allowed for free and that is something we've decided as a country a long time ago. So do not fall for this narrative that the American welfare state is bleeding the American taxpayer dry. In no universe is this the case. Los Haitians uh, vive aquí in uh, las dos años. No tengo un mensual, pero yo nuevo por ahí. Okay. ¿De dónde eres? En Haití. ¿Haití? Sí. ¿Cuántos meses vive aquí? Tengo dos meses. ¿Dos? Sí. ¿Did anyone tell you to come here to Springfield, Ohio? Sí. ¿Did a friend tell you to come move here for a job? How did you learn about Springfield? Yo tengo mi padre por ahí. Okay. How much is it 
to rent an apartment here in Springfield. How much do you pay for rent? Pero todavía yo no pagué, pero yo vivo con mi padre y mensual cada mes 700. Is anyone eating cats out here? No. Okay. He lives with his parents, but they pay $700 a month in rent. In an area like Ohio, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Like rent in a city can get anywhere from like, if you're lucky and you find a good deal, 1200 to like 2500 a month. To give you an idea here of like how expensive rent in like the expensive cities, like, like you know, uh, basically L.A., like Seattle can be that expensive, though I got pretty lucky and found a much cheaper place than that. Um, yeah, it's it's that's a pretty decent that's a cheap rent. The people who live in this town that are complaining that they aren't able to afford six, seven, or eight hundred dollar rent are making abysmally low incomes, abysmally low incomes. So if that's a real problem that like the people in this town are not able to pay their rents. And the rent is presumably like generally close to that range of seven hundred. That's a big problem. That is some cheap fucking rent. Okay. Falso. Falso. Falso información. Okay. Do you know many other Haitians here? Yes. Yeah. A yeah. uh, big community. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. And why are so many Haitians coming here to Springfield in particular? A few Haitians coming here to Springfield, it's because you see, Haitians get job by seeing they believe in the capital of Haiti. It's going to permit that other Haitians come here. Okay. Um, thank you. Also, if you want to support our boots on the ground, independent journalism that is not bought and paid for by corporate. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's pretty much where I imagine all the most interesting parts of the video are, and the rest of it's probably going to be for watch time. Yeah. This content is so depraved to me because I can feel the 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 political like opinions of the guy making these videos. The framing is very deliberate especially when it comes to the homeless content he's made and how like dishonestly it frames the homeless problem in seattle which i live here i know how bad it is i've i've been around seattle i know how much of it is just homeless camps and how much of it isn't the way he frames his if you can't drive anywhere without seeing a homeless camp when in reality there is a strip under an overpass um that goes from like the southern part of Seattle to the northern part of Seattle in this, like, industrial area where all of the homeless camps are. And that's where these guys go to film their videos and frame it like this is the state of Seattle. Basically, there's, like, an, there's this highway road that goes from, like, the real southern parts of Seattle, like in that Renton area, all the way up through, like, the, where the stadiums and industrial shit and, like, old closed-down factory buildings and all that. There's just this long road that leads straight to downtown, and it's all industrial going through multiple towns, including into Seattle proper. And it's this long strip, and it's a lot of empty uh, real estate, like old factories and manufacturing stuff, a few stadiums. So there's just a lot of, like, empty lots that are used for parking for the stadiums, and maybe even the stadium bought out the land, just leaves it there for parking. Um, and uh, there's, there's, like, a bunch of stadiums in this area, by the way. If you, you can look at it on a map and see the, the area that I'm talking about, like, on Google Maps, by the way. Um, that is the area they go to. It is that strip of, like, overpass. And uh, they, like, film their videos there, and they frame it like that 1% of Seattle is the state of the entire city. And then there's the implication that it has to do with Democrat leadership. Which it doesn't. It's just cities are where there's the highest population density. And if you can use logic for half a second, you can figure out, oh, yeah, no, of course the places with the highest population density have the most homeless people in crime. That's just how population density works. For the same reason why cities in the Middle Ages had more, had the Black Plague, right? Like, there was more people densely packed together, so disease spread and that, that wasn't because... That, there wasn't a thing about cities that spontaneously generated Black Plague. It was that having a lot of people close together can sometimes have negative consequences. Having people close together doesn't... Or can help negative things to happen that already happen on their own. Crime already happens. Disease already happens. Cities make these things a bigger problem. It is the prerogative of dishonest actors to take real issues like this and to politicize them for a narrative that only benefits them and their side. And that is what conservatives do with stuff like the crime in cities or the homeless prop problem in cities. And T Tyler o Oliveira is either an honest actor doing a terrible job of of educating people about these things and playing 
into the side of rage baiting, uh, sensationalizing conservative media coverage, or he is one of those sensationalizing conservative media figures. Hard to say which, to be honest. It's a little bit indecipherable. It really almost seems like he has no opinions going into these and, and just talks to people and, and lets people come out of it with whatever opinion they want, which you could argue has merit, but in an issue like this where there could be some serious, dangerous consequences to Haitian immigrants in this town if people genuinely believe that they are a threat to their pets, like when it comes to... The, to when it's like Trump claiming that Democrats want to murder born babies with executions, it's like, dog, at this point you're claiming that we're murderers that want to kill other people's families. Like, you're, you're calling for, you're, you're basically calling for people to engage in violence against your political opponents at that point. And it really feels like this is a ploy to call for violence against local immigrants in that town because your pets are in danger, right? Yep, there's been a lot of bomb threats at the local schools in the town as well. Yeah, the school had to shut down for two days because of bomb threats. I believe it was the same guy as well, the same Russian email address that uh, has sent bomb threats to and death threats to countless other LGBT and uh, pro, uh, just left-leaning institutions and organizations. I believe it was also t the same person behind the Boston Children's Hospital. Uh, bomb threats after libs of TikTok falsely claimed they were doing uh, sex assignment reassignment surgeries on minors and uh, her fans sent bomb threats. The same Russian email address has been tied to uh, the bomb threats on the Springfield school as well. So that's interesting. You know, maybe, maybe food for thought might be worth mulling over. Anyway, if you feel you enjoyed this video, were entertained by it, or maybe perhaps even learned something from it, consider dropping a like. It really helps a ton, and it's totally free. You get to stick it to uh, the corpos at YouTube by forcing them to boost my content in the algorithm, and it really does help a ton. So thank you to everybody, no matter when, where, or what you're watching from me for hitting that like button. It really does mean a lot. Consider following my social medias, link down below in the description to see more from me, and subscribing and ring the bell icon so YouTube actually tells you when I go live or upload a new video. And perhaps even consider joining me in my Discord server. It is the main hub of my community. It's totally free to join. I host game events, call-in streams, and watch parties there. And I even announce all my new uploads and streams every single time. So even if YouTube bugs out, you won't have to worry about missing a stream. And of course, perhaps even consider... Uh, reaching out and supporting me and helping to keep a roof above my head by donating directly on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or supporting me through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, or buying merch at the Streamlabs link down below. But regardless of how you support me, even if you're just chilling out and lurking in chat and you don't say anything, I really do appreciate it. You mean a ton, and I really, really means a lot. Thank you. And I hope to see you again.